All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Mind of a Genius. And today I am super excited to have another genius with us. We have no other than Barbara Delgado, who is the owner of BD Photography. And I'm super excited to have her on here because I personally really respect the work that she does. She has built an empire um, out of really, really good photography. And I believe she is the greatest photography in, I don't know, that I've, that I've seen. And as far as your work, I really respect and love your work tremendously. And so I'm very honored to have you here, Barbara. Um, and so, yeah, you know, welcome. Welcome to Mind of a Thank Genius. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Honestly, it's an honor. I'm a huge fan of you, too. And I've been, you know, watching everything that you're doing. And, and um, I love it. And I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, as you all know, before we start every episode, we have some rapid-fire icebreaker questions. And I am super excited because we have something slightly different. It's more of a this or that um, icebreaker. So I'm going to ask you just like, you know, two options and then you choose one and then we keep going from there. All right. Sounds fun. All right. Are you a music fan? Yes. Oh, beautiful. There you go. All right. So we have, would you choose Madonna or Michael Jackson? Oh, that's hard. Madonna. Madonna. Okay. Madonna or Whitney Houston? Whitney Houston. Okay. Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston or Elton John? Yee, that's hard. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston or Luis Miguel? Ooh, that's tough. Yeah. It depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. uh, Luis Miguel. Okay. Luis Miguel or Celine Dion? Luis Miguel. Luis Miguel or Prince? Prince. Okay. Prince or Tina Turner? Tina Turner, for sure. Okay. Tina Turner or Thalia? Tina Turner. Tina Turner or Bruce Springsteen? Tina Turner. Okay. Tina Turner or Phil Collins? Tina Turner. Tina Turner or Janet Jackson? Tina Turner. Okay. Tina Turner or Stevie Wonder? Tina Turner. Tina Turner or Gloria Trevi? Tina Turner. Okay. Tina Turner or Cher? Ooh. Um, man, that's tough. Yeah. I'm going to have to stick with Tina Turner because Tina Turner on any day, any, any time of day, any, like, she's just brilliant. Okay. Tina Turner or Lionel Richie? Tina Turner. Tina Turner or Alejandro Fernandez? If I'm super drunk, <laughs> Alejandro <laughs> Fernandez, but I'm going to stick with Tina. Honestly, Tina, like, if I put Tina Turner on... I know it's going to be a good day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess Tina Turner wins. Okay, last one. Okay. Tina Turner or Beyonce? <laughs> Tina Turner. Okay, all right. So we have a Tina Turner fan. That is amazing. So it's really good to see. Um, I probably would have chosen, I really like Luis Miguel. It's like I listened to one of his songs and I absolutely loved it. But I, I think I'll choose, you know, Tina Turner over Luis Miguel. I so. love Luis Miguel, too. Honestly, he's one of my favorites. And I can listen to his music all the time. But I feel like there's something about Tina Turner's music that's like fire. It lights a fire wow. under me. And I feel like it has so much rhythm and soul. I love it. Wow. Amazing. All right. So we have Tina Turner winning this rapid fire, um, you know, little quiz, this or that icebreaker. Thank you so much for participating in this, and we're going to dive right into it. Now, we want to talk about, so for a lot of people who want to get into your, your business, your space, we're going to talk about how they can do that. And we're going to talk about a little bit of what you've been able to achieve or what you've been able to do throughout the process and what it took to be able to get there. But before we do that, I want to know what is the story and what is your story? Who is Barbara Delgado and what brought you to this point? Wow. Well, um, I started, I've always loved photography. Photography has always been something that I've enjoyed doing. I never imagined that it would be my career. Honestly, I went to school for fashion design. Wow. And, um, but I, I unfortunately couldn't finish a school and I moved to San Antonio and I started working and, and um, I had to move back home and I was here 
in McAllen mm-hmm. living with my parents when um, one of my best friends opened up a boutique and she needed help taking photos of her clothes and models in them. Mm-hmm. And so I started kind of taking photos and then, you know, a friend had just had kids and could I take photos of her kids? And, um, and then I started working at an art studio and they were wanting photos of the art. And so people were just asking me to take photos because they knew it was something I enjoyed. Yeah. And so then I realized I, I could charge for this, you know? Yep. And uh, I remember, I think in my very first time I charged anybody, I charged $40. Wow. Something like that. Um, how, how long ago was this? 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Um, and so it was something that I realized that I could do. And at the time, I really, you know, I feel like I was a little lost on what I was going to do with my life. And um, photography really came in at a really, really good point. I was living with my parents. They had a two-bedroom condo. And I remember um, I started getting more people asking me to take photos of them. And I don't know how or why, but my parents allowed me to sell their living room furniture so that it was probably a space about this big. What? And I turned that into my very first tiny little studio. And it was with my parents living there, and I would shoot while my mom was at work. And um, And then sometimes I'd even make them, like, leave the house for a little bit if I had somebody oh coming over. God. I know it's terrible, but, um, <laughs> but that's how it started. That was, uh, and that was 15 years ago. And I feel like, um, little by little, it just started evolving. And, um, and then I was able to get the apartment next door or the condo next door. Cause they're little condos. And then I had an in home studio there. Um, and then it just kind of, you know, every, every year, every couple of years, it would just kind of I would move into a bigger space and a bigger space. And I didn't get my first commercial space until like, um, I would say five years into, into that. Wow. So I, you know, I reckon at a time when you, when you were, you know, passionate about this, because you said you charged $40 for your first gig. Did anyone think you were crazy that you could turn photography into a business? A lot of people did. Really? I, yes, I still remember being like, okay, but what do you really want to do? Like, I know that this is this is nice. Like you know, a this is a nice gig. little little thing that you're doing. But yeah. like, you know, you have to like, what do you really want to do? Mm. And um, I would get that a lot, you know. Um, but I just continued. You know, mm. it just kind of uh, was something that never stopped for me. It was, yeah. it was every year. You know, I had better. Be, not bigger clients, but like, you know, I had more clients yes. and, um, and my skill grew within time. I didn't study photography. Now I can say I've taken courses, I've yeah. done workshops and things like that, but it wasn't something that I had, I had studied. So it was a natural thing that came to you. Wow. And, and throughout that experience, you know, talking to people and them shooting down your dream or, or questioning your dream, you do ever question yourself thousand percent every day (laughs) um yeah it was um it was really tough at the beginning because um you know at first you don't really know what you're doing yeah and um and there was a time where I was super overwhelmed it was just me I was doing uh all of like shoots Monday through Sunday at like you know, all hours of the day and then editing all of my stuff. So it almost felt like I didn't have a life. I would be up till 2 a.m., you know. And so, um, you know, it was kind of like at some points I did want to quit because it was it was a lot. And I mean, when you came closer to those times where you want to quit, like, was there anything that really kept you going where you could always look back and say, this is the reason why I kept going. This is the reason why I didn't quit. What, well, one out of necessity, yeah. right? Like I needed, I needed to make yeah. money. Um, but I think also it is a very rewarding job. I do have to say that like being able to provide photographs for people. And at the time when I started, I wasn't really focusing on headshots. It was mostly like family portraits, a lot of oh, yeah. like kid, child, kid portraits. And, um, and so I was able to bring and give people, you know, beautiful memories to hold on to. And so that for me has always been a really important why. Wow. Did you ever imagine, you know, after this, you know, all this time that you would be where you're at? Did you, and did you envision your brand to be so big or did you envision you yourself having, 
you know, such amazing clients? Like, what was the, the vision back then to now? Yes and no. Um, I still can't believe I'm where I'm at right now, uh, to be honest. But I remember um, creating, like, vision boards, right? Wow. And I remember because I was in my in my apartment next to my parents' house. And, um, and I remember I had a vision board of what I would have loved my studio to be like. Wow. And, uh, like everything I had, I had like cut out and pasted on there. Like it came, it came true. You know what I mean? So I know, I don't know that I was conscious about it, but I know I really wanted it. I just, I don't know that I really truly believed that it mm. could happen. You know? So I mean, yeah, you have this. You had this vision board, I, and this was two thousand and. This is probably two thousand ten, something okay, like that. Two thousand. So vision no, 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 boards. No, probably two thousand twelve. Yeah. Okay, so vision boards were in two thousand and twelve. Just saying, <laughs> <laughs> those who are still, those who were born in the two thousand, just so you know, don't think that vision boards just became a thing. But okay, so you you visualized it. You know, even though you may or may not have believed that you could get there. Um, you were still able to put something in, in, in process. And I think it speaks a lot about w how we, we can, we're able to visualize things and the fact that we think about it, it has the potential of happening. I am a true believer in that. Mm. I think I didn't realize now, like, I, I mean, you've heard of the word manifest and manifesting. Yes. I am I'm a huge believer in manifesting. Um, because I've seen it happen firsthand, yeah. but I, I don't think back then I, I realized what I was doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I was doing it, but I was, I don't know that I was like fully aware of what I was doing. Beautiful. Now with, with the work that you do, I know that a lot of passion goes into it. You know, I see how you're excited when you see the work comes out and how you even interact with your clients. What it, what comes behind that smile? What gets you excited to help those clients and make them feel comfortable in an environment like yours? So, uh, for example, today, and this happens every single shoot, people come in and they are so nervous. They are a wreck because taking photos, yeah. you know, and investing in photos, you know, they feel a, a really big pressure to, to look good in these photos and to like these photos. Yep. Um, and when they come in and they're super nervous and then I take that first really great photo. Sometimes it takes a little bit and sometimes it, I get it right away. But once I take that really good first photo and they see it, I am not kidding. The transformation in their, you know, in their being and their confidence level in their, the way that they're feeling about themselves, wow. you see that like this, per, like firsthand. You know, and then the entire rest of the shoot is is just magic. Mm. So that really fuels me. It fuels me because I feel like it empowers people to feel confident about themselves. And I don't think that there's a better feeling than confidence. No, I agree. And, and it's a good point that you, you that you mentioned. You create that first step for them to even feel confident. So sometimes you don't expect your client to come in already confident. It's your work and how good it is is what creates that initial reaction for them to even feel confident. And, and let me tell you, it's not necessarily, I don't know that it's my work. I think it's everything that we do, one prior to and like prepping them, making sure that they feel, you know, the preparation part of it, it plays a big role. Yeah. You know, we do have a, a consultation with them first and create a mood board with them. Nice. Uh, we talk about their brand, about their brand colors, about their personality, because ultimately, I don't know that it's my work that makes the photo so amazing. I feel like it's the fact that they're able to really show themselves, their, mm, their, their true, true selves, selves yeah. in the photo, because you can have an amazing, well-lit photo, but if the person feels self-conscious if the person feels nervous if the person's not like completely like i guess in tune with themselves yes. then it it really transcends in the photo i think it really shows yeah wow and and i think yes you you are 100 percent right the more people are, are their authentic self the better you can see you know the just just everything come together really really well and passionately 
So then you've used that to really build a very, very big personal brand for yourself. How did that go into like building a business? Because I know that, you know, building a business comes with a lot of caveats. You know, you, you experience a lot of, you know, the, the financial aspect of it, the marketing aspect of it, and even building a brand for yourself. What are some of the things or steps you took to build your personal brand? Especially when you're focused on building, helping other people build, build their, their personal brand. brand. Um, I think it is getting help. You know, mm. that you cannot do everything on your own. There are a lot of things I really suck at. Word. There really there really is. I feel like yeah. the majority of the things in business, I'm not great at it. And so finding the people who are going to, you know, kind of help you in those aspects, like your weaknesses, I, I think it's so important to identify your weaknesses and and have people in place to kind of, you know, kind of, work on that that you're not really good at so that you can just focus on what you're really great at. And I think honestly my super strength is making people feel comfortable and yeah. and if I can just focus on that that's amazing. And so there is a lot that goes into a business. Yes. The financial aspect of it, I am so lucky to have my husband who came on who left his corporate job in wow. financing and that was a big thing for him, you know what I mean? Because it was a risk yeah. and he's not that big of a risk taker. Yeah. And um, he jumped on and kind of helped with the finances. I have Lizette and as a creative, for me, the selling is so <laughs> hard to this day. Yeah. I am not good with sales and like yeah. pricing myself and valuing my work is, is still tough yeah. for me. And so, you know, um, I have somebody who helps me with that. And, and thankfully now I have some interns that are helping with the marketing and I have Alex who helps with, with taking all the behind the scenes. So yeah. it definitely is a team effort. It's, I'm, BD photography is not a one woman show. Yeah. It is a team, a team effort. effort. And so I think for those starting out, I think it's important to know that like, if you're doing everything on your own, that's amazing. But in order to get to your next step, you have to start outsourcing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I strongly believe that, you know, there's, you know, you have to hire your hate, you have to hire the things you're not good at. But I think for a lot of people, the question is, like, how do they do that if they're freelancing and they haven't built, built a solid system to be able to even pay for another person? How does someone go from a freelancer to be able to build a solid business, um, you know, as far as that's concerned? It's a very scary jump. Yeah. I will tell you that I think it's smart to, to be able to look at your finances and, and figure out if you can afford it. That's not the route I did. I kind of just... You jumped into it. I jumped into it and I said... And that's kind of how, how I work. Like, yeah. I feel like, you know, let's do this and we'll figure it out as we go along, you know. But if you are having... If you have way too much work, yeah. then... you you should be able to afford to hire somebody. And if you can't afford to hire anybody and you're super busy, you're not charging enough. Mm. That is word. That is really, really good information. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that I think that's the next step because obviously for me, I feel like um, it was supply and demand. You yeah. know what I mean? If it was, there was a high demand then we knew we had to, to raise prices because otherwise you cannot keep up with what you're doing. That's a very good point. And I think a lot of people don't, it's, that, it's just that simple. Um, you know, the concept of supply and demand, making sure that you're, if, if you're going to be able to hire someone, then your pricing, like you need, everything is going to change because now you don't have a freelancer, you have a business. So, um, you know, whoever hires you is, going, is hiring the business, not that one individual. And I will tell you, I'll share a little bit about how I realized I wasn't charging enough. So the editing, right? When I first started, I was like, okay, I need help with editing. I need to outsource that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taking into consideration like how much it would cost me to edit because I was doing the editing. So I was like, it's free. It's not free. Yep. It's my time. time. Yeah. It's my, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, in my head, it was just always like all of these things because I'm doing it, it's free. But how much would it cost you yeah. to have somebody else do it? Because if you can't, afford to hire somebody else to do it then you're not that's what i'm saying you're not charging enough yeah. and so then the, that's why i was like oh 
okay, I wasn't paying myself. I was just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't valuing my time. Yeah. So so that was a big eye-opening for and me. And also for a lot of freelancers, I know that one of the things that you know, most freelancers say um, as far as when it comes to scaling to that next employee is what if people don't want to pay for that higher amount that you're charging? Because you know, photography, you know, has become very saturated. You know, a lot of people will do it for less. And I've seen people like, you know, hey, you know, my cousin can take photos of me. You know, how do you break that mold to where people value you for where you're actually worth? I think that comes by educating, one, by building value. Yeah. You have to bring some value to your client. If you're not bringing value, then, you know, there's, there's nothing that you can, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. Yep. One is by bringing value to your client. Um, and, and for us, it's the whole service part of it. You know what I mean? Like giving them a little bit more so that they feel, um, like they're being valued. Yeah. In in our case, it's like making sure that they, we talk about their styling, helping them out with that. It's not just, they don't just come in and, and, uh, we shoot, there's a big process behind it. So, um, one is creating value for your client and two, if they're not willing to pay those prices, they may not be your client. And I will tell you, I had a client for eight, nine years who, who, when I upped my prices, they, you know, they didn't come back. Yeah. But I had clients who did, who stayed, who have been with me since I was charging $40 and now pay my prices now. And uh, I have new clients you know, who, yeah. who do value the work. And so, yes, are there photographers that could do it for less? Absolutely. But, you know, some people, you have to be able to find the people that connect with you. Yes. And I think that's important. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> you have no, no idea how much I strongly believe what you just said. Because if you don't value yourself, someone else will place value on you. And so, you know, a lot of times, you c not everyone will be your customer. And you have to be willing to face that fact. And say, you know what, you know, you're not my customer. You can find if you want someone who is less expensive, then you can go that route. But you know, I strongly believe in the value I bring, and that's that's where it is. And I think for a lot of people, building the value is is sometimes hard. But you know, it's more than just photography, like you said. And if you build all those together as a service line and make people feel welcome, confident, all of that. I think it, it goes more than just photography in a way that you say it. And so that brings me to my, my, my next question, Barbara. I'm sure that throughout your experience, you went through some really tough times, some really tough challenges. What did those, what did some of those challenges look like for you? Oh, challenges I faced, obviously a lot of the challenges I faced are with our, or pricing and valuing yeah. that's honestly I feel like um that's one of the biggest challenges I had to face and that's more than anything is like believing in yourself and believing in your self-worth and um I actually got a lot of help with that like I did see people because I feel like um I struggled with self-worth yeah. myself and and um and it's something that I just continuously work on is yeah myself and making sure that I'm the best version of me every single day so that when I meet with a client, I feel, I guess you can reflect that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you talk about seeking help, was it by hiring a coach, like hiring what? a coach? Okay. Yes. Um, I had, I've had, I think in the past, like eight years, maybe like four different coaches. Um, wow. And I think like right now, since I'm moving into a new studio, I feel the need again to like get that help again. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not just like, oh, I, I feel good now. I'm done. No, it's it's constantly being able to to feel like you're deserving of where you're going, of what you're wanting. Yeah. And that is is something I think that for me was my biggest struggle. Yeah. Um, obviously, financial struggles. Yes, I went through all that. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that biggest struggle for me was, was that. And I think a lot of people go through a lack of self-awareness stage to where they don't realize that we all need help. Like, you know, no one knows it all. Absolutely no one knows it all. So I really like that you say that is really getting the help that you need, seeking mentorship, seeking guidance. 
uh, because like personally for me, no one would teach you the financial aspect, you know, when it comes to running a business, like a day to day of it. No one teaches you like firing, hiring, all these things that you you literally have to experience in business. And I think seeking help, a lot of people find it difficult just asking for help or seeking help. But I think it's very, very important and crucial, um, you know, for business owners. Yeah. You say that, and I feel like now that I think about it, I feel like and off, the, off the top of my head, I'm like, what challenges did I face? <laughs> I know I faced a lot of challenges. One of them was yeah. the firing, the hiring, the the becoming a leader. Yes. And being the role of a leader when when you've never been that. And you you know what I mean? Like, no, like you said, no one teaches you that. Um, that's actually also been a struggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time. Yeah. And a learning, and, and for me, I think the way that I've learned is by mistakes, yes. right? And I guess I've committed many, 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 many mistakes. Yeah. No, I always <laughs> say the best way to learn is by doing. And you make, once you make those mistakes, you can go back and just be like, I'll just make sure I never make the same mistakes again, you know? Um, but yes, personally for me, Firing was one of the toughest things, you know. How do you look someone in the face and tell them you're not gonna have a paycheck next week or next month or whatever? And but I came to understand that sometimes you need to make, you know, really good fast decisions for the health of the business. And yeah, it was it was personally a big struggle for me. That was it's huge. That's been I you said that and I was like, oh wait, that was a huge that was a huge thing for yeah. me. So. I guess my, my next question, because while we were talking, you talked about getting a new space. And I saw that on Facebook, um, huge, I, I believe it's a historical building, right? And I'm, it, I just saw it and I was like, this is absolutely amazing. Can you tell us a little bit more about that expansion and what are some of the things you kind of prepare to, to make such a huge step or take a huge step like that? So we love our current studio. We've been there for four years and it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, we love the big space. We do a lot of bigger like groups, like um, big companies come in and we do group shots and, and group headshots and things like that. And uh, the one thing that we notice is our building doesn't have any windows. Mm. So we've been in a windowless um, studio for four years. And honestly, it kind of plays a huge role in just your mood every day. Yeah. Um, and Mark and Angela are the ones restoring the building. And, and they're good friends of ours. And when they showed it to us, we were just like, wow, this is a <laughs> photographer's dream. Um, and, you, you know, we, we do want to expand our services to our clients. Yeah. Um, I feel like we do a really great job of photography. And then we kind of stop there. And for us, I think it, we would love to be more involved in the process of, of their marketing journey, right? And what they do with the photos. Yeah. And I think um, that's kind of what we want to grow into. And I started as a natural light photographer only. Really? And, and so then for the past, you know, five years, I've been doing only studio lights. Wow. So I feel like in this new space, I'll be able to combine both things, do both things. Yeah. And I think that's going to, to offer so much more to our clients and just have a beautiful space for them yeah. so that when they go in, they feel that much more at home yeah. right before their photos. It's part of the experience. Correct. You know, yeah. like, again, like you said, and, and it's more than photography. Mm -hmm. And so creating that experience, I can see how that would make people feel even more confident, more comfortable. And I don't know if you're going to do this, but, you know, having like maybe a mini bar in there, you know. Yeah, you see, they can. It, it's it's the experience. And I feel like that's what marketing is about. You know, it's creating an experience that people would never forget. And so when I saw that, I was like, I'm super excited and the fact that it's even a, a historical building that is being restored. I don't know much about the history of that building, so yeah. I don't know if you want to go yes. into it. Yes, so it was the first uh, Hispanic school. It was for uh, Spanish-speaking kids. Wow. And uh, it was back in the 1930s. And, um, you know, there's a lot of history behind yeah. it. And, and a lot of people that went to the school, actually one lady went to our studio today saying that that's where she went to school and what? she can't wait to, like, relive the memories we are going to have a little space there that showcases photos and and the story behind it and as a mexican so i'm i was born in mexico oh wow 
What I part became of Mexico? Monterrey. Ooh, I've been to Monterrey, <laughs> so I love Monterrey. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. And um, I became a citizen last year, actually. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so Congratulations. This, thank you. It's a big year for me. My first year voting, so I'm wow. excited. And, um, and so I feel like as a Mexican, it just makes me so proud. Like it does... Um, makes me proud to be in that building yeah. and know the history behind it and know that now it's being used as something like as a photography studio that's going to be able to create memories yep. for families and, uh, you know, kind of preserve the history. Would you have a little museum in there? Where yes, can we are. We are going to have a little space where people can share photos and, you know, have have a little story about the school. It's going to be really neat. That's I think. fantastic. Yeah. I'm super excited. I'm yeah. super excited. And it's crazy. One of the only places I've been to in Mexico is Monterrey. So you mentioning that, I absolutely love Monterrey. It's I had some beautiful. of the best food yeah. and the best service in Monterrey when we went. And just the nature, everything just looks beautiful. Um, so I absolutely, you know, I have to say, how long ago did you come to America? So uh, we came in 1997. Okay. I know that was a long time ago. So I was a resident for a long, long time. What? Um, and uh, yeah, we've been here since since '97. Because I, you know, you came in and you were a permanent resident, right? I became a resident once I was here. Oh, yes. okay, beautiful. Yes. You know, 1997 is the year I was born, so I'm giving my age really? away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, so nice. uh, yes. it's 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 really cool. It's a lot of relatable stuff. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive into a little bit about just the the experience you create for your client. I know that when the clients come in. There is some, you know, at every point, is there any sort of like, you know, psychology or emotional response um, when you see them or when you're working with some of these clients? Because I know that, again, like we, we talk about, it's, it goes more than just photography. So how do you create a very long lasting experience aside, you know, obviously the confidence aspect of, thing, of things? Is there ever anything that you've learned that you apply just to make sure that they, they like top notch, they have that experience. Yes, every and I will tell you, our process is uh, ever evolving. Mm -hmm. So I think it started off like bef before, like when we first started in person sales. Which, if you're a photographer and you're not doing in person sales, start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but when we first started doing in person sales, we really didn't know. Uh, you know, what to do. And so every time there was a challenge or, or an issue, it was kind of like, okay, let's look at this issue. How can we fix it? How can we make it better for the client? Yeah. Always keeping our clients, you know, um, their best interest at heart is I think what's kept us running things smoothly. Um, so anytime, I feel like a lot of times there's a lot of information to give, yep. especially when they come in and there's a lot to think about and the client, all they're thinking about is I just want to look good. Yeah. But there's a lot more that goes behind it. And so, you know, when we come in, we have a really fun presentation and not a lot of times all the information gets in. So we've developed ways to make sure that the client knows what they're what they're walking into, yep. right? I think that's huge. I feel like being able to guide the client every step of the way, yeah. whether they come in, we talk about who they are, we get to know them, we really get to to figure out like why they're coming to us, what they're needing these photographs for, whether it's branding or family. And, um, and then with all that information, we're able to really guide that photography session yeah. to their needs, you know? Yeah. And, and, we help them out with styling. A lot of times they're like, I don't know what to wear. I don't know what's going to look good on me. And a lot of times their idea, you know, the only way I can bring their idea to life is by us really communicating what that idea is, visualizing their idea yeah. and then bringing it to life. So I feel like that whole process is so important. And even today, like anything goes wrong. Like I think last week we sat, I sat down with Lizette and I was like, okay, let's go over our studio tours, which is what we call that initial meeting. Yeah. Um, how's it going? What can we change? How can we make it better? Like, what is our feedback from our clients? And I'm really happy to say that, like, we constantly go over our process and are constantly trying to figure out ways to make it better, evolving, not keeping it the same. Even yeah. if it's working, you know, there's always things that you can do better. Wow. And and I think it's it's a very it's a very important thing to note that, you you 
I mean, you can you can never have it all 100% figured out. It's, you know, you consistently have to be better because there's other people who are also trying to be better. So the more you evolve, the more you change, it doesn't just help you, it helps the clients. And I think that, again, you've done a great job at that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having to take a studio tour very soon. So yes. I'm putting it out here now. So <laughs> now I have to commit to a studio yeah. tour. Um, I guess the next thing is there is a lot of, you know, when I've been on so many photography groups and, you know, you see a lot of photographers or freelancers complain about, you know, they create, you know, the work for the client and let's say the client says, I don't like the way I look yes. or the client uh, requests so many edits or uh -huh. has so much like critique in the work. How do they avoid stuff like that? So one is by setting a really clear expectation which happens in our process. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of that at the beginning yeah. because clients don't know what to expect. That's when you're going to get into issues. If they don't have a clear, very clear idea of what your boundaries are and boundaries are so mm. important. Like what, uh, you know, how much do you want to give to this client in the sense of like edits? You know, I think edits is one of the big things that we talk about yeah. and like, Hey, when you see your photos, they will be edited you know, to photographer's discretion, additional edits and curfees, you know, and mm. also we have to be, I think for me, it's important to let our clients know, like, you know, we still want you to look like you. Yeah. The other part is while I'm shooting, I'm showing my client Ooh, yeah. the work. Yep. It's never a surprise to how they look. And I don't ever want it to be a yes. surprise to how they're looking. Like, I don't want them to not know anything and then see their photos yeah. and then be like, oh, my God, I hated this or I hated that. Um, so most of my clients get hair and make if they're women, they get hair and makeup done at the studio. And we do a test shot so that they see their hair, they see their makeup. Nice. I'm showing them. And as I'm shooting, I'm getting feedback from them we're showing the work and they're like, I love that. And once I know what expression they love, once yeah. I know, and that's how we're able to get really great shots is by really having that communication back and forth throughout, not only the beginning, but the shoot as well. Yeah. And, and it's, it's again, it's, I think for most businesses really setting that standard and clear expectation. And I guess a lot of freelancers or, or solo people really, don't have the systems down on how to set those expectations. So I think this is really good information that can that can help a lot of people. And I guess the the other aspect of my question goes to, so you are a creative, right? So you have a lot of ideas on what you want something to come out at the end of the day. There is something called creative fatigue, you know? Yeah. <laughs> how do you get over that? How do you consistently stay creative new trends how do you just immerse yourself in that so that is a tough one i think uh, we've learned that um minimizing the amount of shoots i do yeah i don't handle my schedule lizette does and so sometimes uh you know i at the beginning it was like five shoots sometimes in a day and then i realized hey after shoot two I am not giving my 100% to my clients. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is another thing I struggled mm. with. And so I think it was like, do we want quantity or do we want quality? quality? And we we definitely always want quality. And uh, now I know I can only do two shoots a day. Wow. Uh, if a client's like, can you please fit me in? I will tell them, if I fit you in, I will not be giving you my 100%. 100%. Yeah. And I will not be able to say with certainty that... I'm going to get your all of the shots that you want, because yeah. honestly, after shoot two, I'm I'm drained. The other thing is um, now we're very we're very uh, clear on when to shoot and when not to shoot. Like I like to be out of work by three. Wow. By 3 p.m. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's not about working more. It's about working less and being able to give my best to those clients because creative fatigue is a thing. And yeah. there, there's like, I've experienced it. And, you know, luckily uh, I have people to back me up when I'm not feeling 100%. I yeah. have somebody in the studio. I have the makeup artist who can kind of, you know, support me in those yeah. times. But, um, but yeah, I, they're, you know, making sure that you're taking care of yourself, giving yourself that time to rest, that time to recoup is is. So so important because yeah. otherwise, you know, you will you won't be able to give your your best to your clients. 
And and I guess that goes into you know something that w- most people don't talk about is mental health. How do you m- just manage that? How do you manage to make sure that you're in a right you know t- frame of mind? You don't. You how do you avoid burnout? And has there been any time where you really really felt down? And you know how did you cope with that? Um, I think. Mental health is so important. It's something that I'm really passionate about and something that I personally now really focus on myself. Yeah. Um, getting help, you know. I actually, I, I'm i not ashamed to, to talk about that I do therapy. I, You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of things that, that we go through in life and not just work, but like I think in order to be truly successful, you have to be able to, to be successful at work and also in your in your private life you know what i mean in your home life like around and all your relationships and that's really hard to to balance and so i think really seeking help and understanding that that it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you i think it's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed especially in today's world um for me i go home at three um great (laughs) (laughs) I I like to get to the gym. Okay. I've been focusing on eating right, and I feel like that's made a huge difference yeah. because two or three years ago, I think, um, I wasn't focusing on myself. Yeah. I feel like I was extremely stressed out. I had gained a bunch of weight. I wasn't feeling happy, and no, no amount of success yeah. will make you happy if you're not truly taking care of yourself. Mm. Oh, that's word. That I, I think... You know the the reason why I ask that is is people and especially when you know when I speak to other freelancers in in the business they do go through a lot of like stress you know they are overwhelmed of you know shoot after shoot after shoot and then having to edit and so they really never take care of themselves or seek the help that they need but I think what you said is very important is we 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 consistently have to take care of our mental health seek the help that we need and just be in the best try to be in the best shape of our lives i think that kind of motivates you consistently to to even be better you know once you're healthy you feel better you're in the right frame of mind and everything and And so what are some of the things you do as well sorry no i was going to say i think surrounding yourself by people who inspire you Mm. really does help and people who are doing the things that you want to do i think Mm. when i started my podcast which I've taken a hiatus from, by the way, yeah. because it was overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I, <laughs> this is defeating the whole purpose. Yeah. Was because I really wanted to bring people on that were, were living the life that I felt like I wanted to live. Like yeah. people who were, you know, eating well or, or living in, he- like where health was like a big part of their life yeah. because that's what I wanted to tune into. And so I think like finding the people that are doing the things that you aspire to do and be is is also a huge part of it yeah yeah and i I think a lot of times people you know feel you know shy or you know they feel some sort of reservedness to ask for the help and i think what i tell people is like you know what's going to happen like just ask you know just ask for advice ask for help whatever and i think people are more willing to help than we think and i realized that you know moving here to the rio grande valley is all it takes is really asking for the help that you that you need i will tell you also offering trades so i don't really do trades but like all Mm. of my health things like i think with tribe i did a trade with matthew from quiet mind yoga i did a trade so i got private yoga lessons from him i did a trade with um with vic from infinite love and um you know like i feel like all of my health stuff like I did trades for that because I felt like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, okay, we can help each other out here, you know? And so I feel like it is so important. If you don't have the money to pay for somebody, do a trade because those trades are so worth it and they are life changing. Uh, That's, that's a very good point for me to take. So I think I'm going to start doing some trades, you know, to get some, some personal training. (laughs) That's one tip that I'm definitely going to take. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and I love that. So then, you know, toward you know obviously to to kind of close everything out two things number one what are some of the goals personal goals for you and for bd photography for the next couple years i know that 
you are visionary, um, you have a plan or idea of what you want to do and how you want to help people. What is something that is very close to you or dear to your heart that you want to really see happen? So I think for the next couple of years, my goal with BD Photography is obviously one, to continue to provide the, a great experience for those who come into our doors, but also like uh, working with our community and how can we really, how can I help our community become better, you yeah. know? And um, I got involved with Yaki this past year. We raised $15,000 for them. And um, I think what we want to do is kind of find organizations that are needing help and how can we collaborate with them. Yeah. Um, and also my big plan, f especially moving into this new studio, is to be able to provide a bigger service to our clients, yeah. a more full service to them, and, and really collaborating with creatives here because we have a lot of great talent. And I know I can't do everything, yeah. and I feel like I would really love to collaborate with like-minded people to come yeah. into our space and really create and um, give our clients something of great value yeah. and, um, you know, kind of help them become and be the best versions of themselves as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people would love to get mentored by you. So, you know, I don't know, some sort of mentorship program um, that would really be of value to a lot of people. And I love that you talk about, you know, that partnership you had with Yaki um, to really raise money for them. I think that's that's incredible. That's amazing. You know, maybe we can partner in, in, in the future on something as well to really give back to the community. Um, one One area that I'm very passionate about is... Uh, organizations that work with people with disabilities. Yeah. So um, maybe we can we can partner. Of course, in that way I would love well. to. You amazing. let me know. We honestly we are all about collaborating and, yeah. and helping each other out, and and I think that's the only way we get ahead. Yeah, amazing. Yes. All right. So final thing, and and this is something I ask everyone um, that comes here on the podcast is. What advice would you give to anybody who wants to get into the photography business or the or the the branding business? What advice would you give to them on just in general getting started? Two things. One is um, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. I feel like there's no. I feel like a lot of t times people think that they have to get have it all figured out, and they don't. You don't. I think if you want to do something, just just start it. And two go out there and network I feel like and you know meet the right like go and be in front of the people yeah. that are doing what you want to do and um, I think that's all you really need to do wow you know I have to say this because I was just watching re-watching one of the episodes I did with Alex and when I asked him this question one of the things he said is just just go get it like yeah. just get it done and or get just get started. And so I love that most people who come here really, really talk about just getting it done because a lot of times people hold themselves back from really getting the life that they, they deserve or the life that they want because they expect or want everything to be fall in place before they, they, they get started. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate you mentioning that. Yeah, it's gonna be messy, but um, it'll get better. And, and the more you do it, the better you are at it. So yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. I think. I think this has been a tremendous and amazing episode. I know that a lot of people, creatives, would, would really benefit from, from such vital information like this. And I appreciate you taking your time because you didn't have to be here, you know, you, but you took the time to really talk to me and anyone watching as well. Please make sure you follow BD Photography um, if you want to share a little bit of your socials. and Yeah. And it's uh follow me at or follow us at the BD experience and um we are BD photo BD photos on Facebook and the BD experience on Instagram beautiful and just really really go out and support trust me if we're talking about amazing photography it's BD photography so keep that in mind you are a genius mm -hmm. and i appreciate you coming on this podcast and you know thank you Thank, Thank you, you for, for sharing me. all your amazing experience with us. And I'm looking forward to having you in the future as well. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed being here and I can't wait to collaborate. Yeah, let's <laughs> go. We got this. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, share this episode, and, you know, just like. See you later. <laughs>